So, you, from, you got to start from that point, point of view. All right? God is going to strengthen the church. And remember, the church is us collectively and then you individually. You individually. So now what? You got to check yourself. You got to check yourself. Maybe you've been in fear. Maybe you've been in fear. And believe me, spirits of fear has been loosened upon the earth. And it's not only for the COVID. All of a sudden, fear has grabbed people's heart. And in the confinement, they are divorced now. They got a divorce. Maybe uh, they have economic problems. You see, they start fearing a bunch of other things. Basically, it was the COVID. And it may continue. But then it's other things that that same spirit of fear will open doors. Are you following what I tell you? Are you, are you asleep now? Say, no, I'm not asleep. You better not be asleep. Hit, hit him. If he falls asleep, just hit him in the ribs. Now, let me see. Let me tell you something. We're talking about strengthening. And we're talking about today about strengthening love. Strengthening love. Love is important. Love is important. Galatians 3.11. What, what is Galatians 3.11 says? 3.11 says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. In other words, law will not solve your problems. This, I do this, and I'm talking about, uh, even in the natural, law has the power showing you where you're at, whether you're right or whether you're wrong, whether you should be punished, you should be forgiven. You know what I mean? He, law doesn't solve anything. Law shows you what, where you are at, okay? Because it will manifest what you have done, and that is wrong, because the law says that's wrong. But that doesn't mean it's going to fix what is wrong. It just shows you that you're wrong. You got what I'm saying? Say, yes, yes, I do. Even though you don't, you, if you, you don't understand me, say, Pastor, I understand. God will bless you because of yes. So, it's evident that you cannot be justified by the law. Okay. But that no man is justified by the law in, in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. In other words, what is going to solve your problem is faith. What is going to solve your problem is not the law. It's faith. Faith. The just. Now, we got to understand. And we got to allow our minds to relax. Because I, the way my mind see myself is who I am. Okay? The other day, uh, I heard a, a, a preacher. He's a good preacher. He, I, I, I learn from everybody. I learn from everybody. But not everybody's always right. Except me and a couple of other people. <laughs> 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 he says, talking about debt and being free from debt. Tremendous preaching, tremendous sermon, tremendous teaching. But he says, when you see yourself Free from that, God will see you free from that. What do you think about that? All right. If you say, yeah, you're wrong, just like he is wrong. <laughs> Whenever you see yourself free from that, God will see you free from that. No. God already sees you free from that. The point is not that you have to convince God how he's going to look at you. You have to convince yourself how God looks at you and then try to connect. You follow? God sees you free from debt even though you will be deep in debt. God sees you free even though you may be bound. All right? God sees you free from sins even though you may be in sin because Jesus paid for the sins already. Of course, we have to always activate something on this earth to make that which has already happened in heaven to make that to manifest in legally in this earth. Do you realize that the Bible, I don't want to get into many things because you know what I'm saying. If I start talking, you know. But I'm going to, I'll be entertaining, relax. <laughs> but but uh, the Bible says that Jesus died before the world was formed. That's amazing. What do you mean? I thought it was 2,000 years ago. Legally for this earth, 
He had to legalize it. You know, he was, your sins were ready for, everything is already done in the spiritual world. It's not that it's going to be done. Jesus paid for your sins and also paid for your sickness. So you know what? You that are in a wheelchair, you that have COVID, you're already healed. What do you mean? Look at me. No, no, no. Hey, he already. The thing is that that which he did and took place in the spiritual world needs to be transferred. And you know what is the instrument of transferring? What is the tool that transfer? Faith. Faith is the tool that will transfer that which already has taken place in the spiritual world. So, it's important what it says here. When it says, what we read, the just shall live by faith. But this is another problem. The devil doesn't want you to activate this. Because the first thing is going to tell you when you read this, the just shall live by faith, he's going to say, but this is not talking about you. Because you're doing a bunch of stupid things, and definitely you're not just. But of course you are not just for your own works. But we're talking about the work of Jesus. He is the just. And when I receive Jesus, he justifies me. I am the just. Whenever you see, and the devil, the devil wants automatically, when you see, you see, whenever the Bible talks about just, there is something that comes afterwards that is a blessing for you. But if you do not receive it, you do not transfer it. Are you following? If you do not receive it, you will not transfer it. And if you don't, will not transfer, you will remain in the level that you're at. It's a level that you don't want to be. Because you don't want to be in the level of sickness, in the level of poverty, in the level of problems, your marriage pro. You know what I'm trying to tell you? You want to, you must ascend. You might go from the natural to supernatural. And the only way they can do that is believing it by faith. That is the instrument that transfer what God has for you. So now, the just, talking about you. But in the point that you realize that you are justified because of Jesus was the just one, not you. But you are now the just because he lives in you. Hey, you follow me? Don't make me repeat all this. Good, thank you. So, the just, the, say, me, me, shall live by faith. That means that we are supposed to live by faith. We are supposed to live transferring everything that God has, transferring for our lives. That's what we are supposed to be. But pastor, I thought you were going to talk about love. And now you're talking about faith. You always talk about faith. Well, I always talk about faith because I like to transfer. And I need to transfer even more. You hear? But, but what, about, what about love? Ah, what about love? Now listen, I was talking about faith because now the same book of Galatians, the Holy Spirit writes through the pen of Paul in Galatians 5, 6. Look what it says in Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. My God, I'm talking about love. You know what I mean? Love makes faith works. And faith, so you see, the point is that we have the idea, which is okay, but it's more than the idea, of the sweetness of love. Love is so nice. Harmony. You know what I mean? Peaceful, you know? Uh, walking with a dog, under, you know what I'm saying? Beside the, <laughs> the whatever. The hurricane comes, and everybody's in peace. Okay, so it's fine. That idea of love is right, because it brings harmony, brings togetherness, etc. But it's more than that. If love is not present, your faith is weak. If your faith is weak, what you may need in your life may not be being able to transfer, because your faith got to be as strong as God gave it to you. Remember, faith is not yours, it's God. He gave us a measure of his faith. For us to use it like he uses it. Therefore, you cannot, that's why it says that he cannot, you cannot doubt. Because if you doubt, it's just like if you didn't believe. Why? Well, if you doubt, you may not believe or you may believe and doubt. If you believe and doubt, 
That doubt is a contaminant. It will weaken your faith. Therefore, if you weaken your faith, it's not just like God gave it to you. The first impact that we have with faith is the day we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I wasn't there. I didn't see him die. I know by history that somebody died, but I believe that 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 died, I believe, was God made man. I believe the blood he shed 2,000 years ago is perpetual. It's forever blood that when I, in 1974, when I decided to receive Jesus, that blood activated and cleansed me from all my sins. I had to believe all that, and I wasn't there. That purity of belief without doubting made me save. That's the same way for anything else that you need to transfer. I said that's the same way for anything. Oh, my God. That's the same way anything you may need to transfer. Because if you doubt it, you contaminate it. If you contaminate it and you weaken it, it's not just like faith. God gave it to you. People say, well, I believe, but when they give you a but, it's a but. It's a but. And but usually is behind. Take you behind. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> therefore, got to be careful with the buts. You either believe i rather believe or not believe. But when I believe and I start doubting, that's terrible. Because when I don't believe, I push myself to believe. But when I start doubting, those are little things that I'm considering it. Doubt is realistic things that I'm considering. And as I consider in them, then they start taking place, contaminating my faith. And I cannot transfer what I need to transfer. Whatever it may, what are you waiting for, God? What are you waiting for, God? Now, so that's talking about faith. Going back with love. Love or its manifestations in mercy, in forgiving, everything that love is present is to bless God and to bless others. It's not just a nice feeling. Love is a most powerful thing that... It, God has in the universe because everything depends of God in, in, in love because it happens that God does not have love. God is love. Yes. Are you following me? So this is very important that we realize that we need to develop love, not just to make God happy and to have nice everything sweet around us. It's because without it, faith cannot function because faith worketh or functions or takes place by love. So say, I have love. I have love. It doesn't matter if you don't got it. You, you first have to declare it and start convincing you that you're going to start doing or walking in a manner that you didn't walk before. You see, you, you cannot wait for healing to be manifested to declare yourself healed. You gotta say I'm healed, even though you're still in a wheelchair. Because there is another thing now, the method that God, when you received Jesus, it was not a thought. You had to declare, okay? You had to confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you. Receive in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you. The confession is very important. Your declaration, the power of your words. Your words are. The vehicle that will transfer your faith to the point that you may need it. For it to work. For it to produce. Your words. Your words. Some of you are living today based on the, what you pronounce over yourself. And some of you even have to, for, have to repent of the way we have spoken to our children. You know? Well, I only spoke the reality. He had bad notes. He's stupid. No, you are stupid, not him. <laughs> because he has bad notes and probably will continue to have bad grades simply because of the confession that you are doing over the boy. How about telling him instead of his, you are stupid because he got bad notes, bad grades, say, hey, you are better than this. 
You know you're, you're Jesus. We know about the Lord. The, the Holy Spirit will like, you, help you. He's not going to cheat in the, in the test, but he's going to help you. Anything you've studied, he'll bring it to your memory when you come. You, you can do it. Come on. Let's pray before the thing. If you say that, that guy is going to change. Your son is going to change. But every year he's worse because of your fault. And now he's a man, and now he has become an idiot, thanks to you. Are you following me like it is? It's like it is. It's like it is. It's like it is. It's like it is. So what do I have to do if I was one like that? Well, like everybody has to do, repent. God will always forgive you. God will always forgive you. And it's even worse than that. Or even worse or best than that. Not only you have to ask God to forgive you your lack of of your ignorance, your lack of knowledge in how he works things. But you're going to have to perhaps go to your son that now he's 40 years old and ask him to forgive you. Will you do that? What have you pronounced over your son or your daughter that now you know that she has gone in life and you're going to say, she is going through what I knew she was going to go through. No, you didn't know anything. You just established stupid things over her. And that's why she had now three children without being married. They have left her and is in a corner. And all because you used to call her this, this, and that when she was only 14. Give the Lord a hand. Wow. Your words will mark your future. Your words will mark your future. But now, your children are under your... Your, your power, your authority. That means that your word will mark them also. And it marks them spiritually, but of course, also connects with mentally and emotionally. You know? So I say this, I, what do I say this? I say this to parents to be careful with how they speak to children. I say this to parents to repent if they have already done it, and to try to go to the, to the son and show them your, your situation or what it was and the mistake you made. But I'm talking here to young people because your father could be an animal. <laughs> and then you're going to have to love him but not accept what he's saying but when he puts you down. This is what Pastor Delgado said. And look what my dad is saying. But I forgive him because he doesn't know better than that. He doesn't know best. So I am going to forgive him. I'm going to continue to love him. But I will not accept that I'm stupid. I will not accept that I'm an ignorant. I will not accept that I will never make it. I will not accept it because Jesus in me is the hope of glory. You follow? Hey, this is, this is becoming pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good up here, you know. Don't shut me down because I'm doing good now. Praise the Lord. Yeah, my man. So I had so many things here now. This is amazing. I think I have to come more often here, you know what I'm saying? No, my son does pretty good. Yeah. Pastor Ernie's here. He's going to be helping us to put. Get up, Ernie. The pilots and people will see you. This Pastor Ernie is going to help us. As you realize, he brings his, his fine club. <laughs> you see, why? Ernie's group is here. <laughs> Hi, hallelujah. Well, hey, I'm having fun in this. This is, this is good. This is good. Praise the name of the Lord. Hey, look, let's look, look five. This uh, love. Say love. love. Love empowers your faith. All right? So now you're going to look at love different. Not only as a pretty thing, but it's something that is going to strengthen your faith. Because you may not know why, but God says it. Faith worketh by love, period. You don't have to know the why. You only have to know that if God says it, that's the way it is. And you have to seek to do. That's it, my man. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now, Luke, what did I say? Luke 5? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. Hey, this is growing. You know what I mean? Amen. 
This is yeah, God has plans for the church. You know, you got to give away. Remember, you are sheep. The pastor does not, you know, create sheep. You create sheep. You are the one that have to give birth to sheep. You got to get people to come into the church. Amen. Our job is to be here and guide and direct you through the word of God. But really, even though we could, we shouldn't or not supposed to, be knocking on doors or bring, talking to your friends. You talk to your friends. You knock on the door of your neighbor that you know he has or she has a problem. And tell him, hey, I know what the results are. What, 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 what's going to change your life? What's going to change your situation? Who? Jesus. Well, I am, I am also a Christian. Well, come to a church, man. It's powerful over there. There's power over there. I said, there's power over there. That will change your life. Praise God. Let me get to Luke. Luke 5. Luke 5. Do I have, what time is it, man? I get to do that. I got, I got another service in Espanol. No. Donde? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Let me hurry up. Are you laughing with me or laughing at me? What? I got to be careful with the people. I got to be careful with you guys. Luke 5. Verse 15. And these lights here are not the best in the world. Let it be light. No. <laughs> Didn't work. Okay, verse 17. 517. Let's go there. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out on every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed of a man which was taken with a palsy, was paralytic. And they sought means to bring him in, oh, I cannot see with this light, and, see, and lay to him before him, and when they could not find by what they might bring him to become on the multitude, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilings of the couch into the midst of before Jesus. I'm really like if I was in first grade, but I cannot see well here. <laughs> Believe me, I passed first grade. I did. This is important. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, in other words, these guys came with this guy in a, in a bed and they put him through the roof. They broke the roof and they put him down. I mean, that's love. You understand that? You got to have love for this. Now, Well, this is, gracias. Hey. Ain't that great? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, see, I can't read. When Jesus, he answered and said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Go. Whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon the earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, unto thee, arise Amen. and take up the couch and go into thine house. Keep on. And immediately, say immediately. Amen. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house. Glorifying God. Continue. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God. And were filled with fear. Saying we have seen strange things today. They all glorify God. Glorify God. That fear is not fear of cowardice. That fear is reverence. Alright. That is a fear. You have to sometimes divide and know the the, the real inside of the word, 
This is, they were all in reverence of what happened. But you see, this is what it is. That man was healed. There were many things happening that day. Jesus was healing a lot of people. But the one that took the cake and the one that had the applause and the one that amazed was the people bringing her from the roof. Can you imagine that we are having, talking about people here, that God healing people here, praying for people that somebody breaks the roof? You better don't do it, but <laughs> I understand. It is something. Everybody will be amazed. And then... The only one that he told your sins are forgiven was him. So that even placed the Pharisees in a position of, uh, you know, of saying, what, what are you talking about? Protest. They like protest. Maybe they did it, but black life matters. Uh, <laughs> they are protesting. They like to protest. People like to protest. So what happened? Jesus said, hey, you think this is heavy? That I may tell him his, his sins are forgiven? But now, look what I tell you. You take your bed, get up, and walk. In other words, healing took place. People got saved. Everybody glorified Jesus. That was the main event of everything that happened. And everything took place, not because the guy of palsy, but because of the love of those that put the bed down. A faith was activated because of love. I want you to see, because whatever situation you have, you got to lower your own bed or your own situation and put it in the hands. It doesn't matter where Jesus is. Break the roof. Go against whatever they tell you. That is your roof. That is your obstacle. Whatever they may tell you, whatever they may think. And you're, Don't you think that they had opposition? Be, before that, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will always, in some of this type of thing, will draw an image in your heart. An image that he wants you to believe it, and he wants you to bring it to pass, to give fruit. What does it mean? Manifestation in the natural. Transferring. Transferring. The Holy Spirit shows you what is already there, that you believe it, and you transfer it. How? Ooh, I said your words. Pow! Are you following me, people? This is so important. God has developed that in these people. They wanted his friends to be healed, but it was an image, an image of uh, how we're going to do. We cannot do it. We came up to here, but look, so many people. There was an image of us going up, of us breaking the roof and putting it down in front of him. That was an image. Now, for it to take place, I had to believe it. I had to believe it, I had to speak it, and I had to do it. So it will take place, and it will get it in front of him, and we are going to see the final result. But what do you think when they spoke about this? The devil, you think he's going to allow them just to do it? No, not for sure. I am sure that one of them said, listen, we're going to get her to the roof. We're going to, this is a bed with this guy there. I cannot move. I got a problem with my left knee. And yesterday was sprinkling. You know what I mean? It was raining a little bit. That got to be very slippery up there. If I fall, you know, this is fear. Already showing you some realities. Because yesterday was raining. This and that. What is going on? I may, we may not be able to do that. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to fall. I don't want to fall. And the other one say, listen, I, uh, I don't think we're going to fall. We're going to be careful, et cetera. But one thing I tell you, be ready. Say goodbye to your family because we're going to go to jail. <laughs> we're breaking this guy's roof. <laughs> we are breaking this. I don't, this is Agustin. Agustin is the ugly guy. He hates everybody in town. And we're going to break his roof. The cops are going to be there. So now we're going to do it. But you know, say goodbye to your wife and your children for, for a few years. You see, obstacles in realities that could happen. And then the last one said, well, hey, I don't think this guy will tell him what it is. He had people, you know, he's not going to call the police and, and we're not going to fall. But we're going to have to fix his roof. You have any money? 
we're going to fix his roof. We're going to break his roof. So all these things could happen and more that, in other words, to get the people to say, hey, listen, I understand that we want to do this. There's a lot of people. We did our best. But that idea, and that idea was a, an image. That idea of us breaking the roof and putting it in front of the Lord, we better not do it. Because it's very negative, these things. Hello? Mm-hmm. This came from the roof, this guy. <laughs> so, but are you follow what I'm saying? They did not allow that to happen. Whatever really came to their minds of fear, in order for them to cancel their project that God has placed in them, it didn't work. Because love was so powerful. Love was so powerful for his friend that couldn't move, that they say, it doesn't matter what may be, we are going to take him, and we know that if we do this, there will be a positive result, because Jesus is there. Come on. Jesus is there. Hallelujah. So this is important for us to know. There will always be obstacles. And obstacles with realities, it's not just joke. You are going to put two and two, and it's always four, except with God. Except with God. It may not be four for God. So there are things that, but you got to, you got to go by what God places in your heart. And you got to believe what God places in your heart. You see, as long, as long as Jesus Christ is glorified, push and go. I say push and go as long as you know. He's going to be glorified. Now, you say, well, my, my, the, well, the image that I have is a new home. So that's not uh, Jesus glorified. No, you're wrong. All depends on your attitude because you, Jesus can get glorified with your new home, your new car, and your new pair of shoes. As long as you tell the people how you got it and who got it. You see, the point is, for you to think of this now, this little bit that I just said, think like this, you got to look at yourself. Some people say, this is the work of the Lord and this is personal. No. I really believe that you are just a method that God uses here for his work. You are the work of the Lord. Some of you have never done anything but you were supposed to and you're still alive to do. And some of you have done little you're still alive to do more. And some of you are doing more, you must continue. So the thing is that the more you do for God, the more he will bless you. And then you have to be open to realize that there are things coming to you that may look personal and are personal, but are really connected with the work of the Lord. Because Jesus is glorified. And when somebody's poor, and you tell that person that is poor, how you came out of poverty and how Jesus did it, and now where you're at, oh my God, that Jesus is glorified. Especially that inspires that other person, not just simply to come out of poverty, but to realize that we have a good God. More than you say God is good. No, God is good because I say God is good. God is good because he showed me his goodness. That get on your feet. 